And welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. The World Series on MLB The Show coming up. It's the Miami Marlins taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Alongside Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. It's been quite a series so far, and the excitement's only ramping up as we get ready for Game 5. Well, being down three games to one, calling it a do-or-die game is no exaggeration, but these situations tell us a lot about a team's character, and for some teams, it brings out their absolute best, but for others, it kind of proved to be an overwhelming scenario to face, and so we'll see how they show up here today. And we'll also get to see what kind of killer instinct they have on the other side. Some teams can get a little too relaxed when they're so comfortably in the driver's seat. First pitch coming your way next. So just about set now. And today's starting pitcher, Tuki Tucson. What should we keep an eye on here? Well, he's a guy that needs to establish himself. Just settle in that first time through the order. Be able to command your first pitch, maybe a secondary pitch, and not show too much. That will allow you to get through the order a couple of times before having to turn it over to the bullpen in those middle innings. They're looking for this guy to get through the lineup a couple of times at least, limit some damage, and just keep him in this ball game. And he deals. Mookie Betts at the plate now. That's ball one. The 1 0. Swing and a foul straight back. And a 1 1. And yeah, that's outside. Off the mark there. Three balls and a strike. There's a strike. Ouch, that one drilled him. Toss to Naylor, and Betts is gone. That one got him pretty good, but perhaps the silver lining is that it got him in his non-throwing arm, Chris. Yeah, assuming there's nothing broken in there, I think he should be able to shake this one off. But, man, that can't feel good. It's going to have a pretty nice bruise at the very least, that's for sure. John Birdie at the plate. And that's in there for strike one. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. Man, he was really tardy on that fastball. Great job of setting him up by throwing the curveball. Add some velocity to it on the next pitch. Can't catch up. Next one misses. Oh. Going to count one and two. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0-2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Had him out front for strike three. And Chris, that's a way to neutralize his speed by keeping him off base. And the defense breathes a sigh of relief because he puts pressure on everyone if he can put the ball in play. But that's how you do it. Keep him off balance, get him out of there, and deal with the next guy. And the right-hander deals. That one's in there. 0 oh 2. Oh, this guy's so comfortable hitting with two strikes. Even a good pitch early in the at bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0 2 count. Next offering misses. Now 1 and 2. Good eye right there. The pitch. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. And one, two, three, go the Marlins. Now the Guardians will get their shot, still scoreless. This is the World Series on the show. Back 
back here in Cleveland. And today's starting pitcher, Edward Cabrera. Chris, what should we keep an eye on here with him? Well, last time out, he's only able to complete four innings, but really battled. Didn't have his best stuff. I look for him to be better in this one. Bottom of the first. So in now for Cleveland, Stephen Kwan. The pitch. That misses, and it's 1-0. Righty delivers on the ground. Birdie fires over to first. One gone, bottom half of the first. And now it's Ahmed Rosario. That's off the mark, and that is ball one. Down the line towards the corner. Betts on the move. Flashes the leather on the run and catch. Two down. Hey, man, four pitches, two outs. That is an excellent pace. Two outs, base is empty. And up next for Cleveland, Jose Ramirez. And the first pitch misses up. in the dirt. Kicks and fires. And a rope in the center field base hit. Now he turns and heads for second. The throw in. And he'll make it to second base with two gone. Just a very nice approach and swing right there to use the big part of the field. Everything was on time. He stayed balanced through the entire swing and just launched that one into center. Here's Andres Jimenez. Pitch misses oh. inside, and that's ball one. Well, they're one looking to get on the board first here after that clutch two-out double made this inning interesting. Runner at second, two down. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, he left that change up up, got away with one there, and he'll take it, but doesn't want to make that mistake again. And the righty deals. Next offering misses down and away. Two and one the count now. He hasn't seen a fastball yet, but you've got to be ready to hit one because you doubt the pitcher wants this to go to a 3-1 count. The 2-1. Good eye right oh. there. This doesn't seem to want to throw him a fastball. Josh Naylor on deck for the Guardians. The pitch. That's a strike. Counts full, three and two. And boy, that was the pitch. Three one. You want to be really aggressive on the fastball. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. In the air, right field. Bet settles underneath it. He's got it. And that is that. First frame of the night behind us, and it's nothing, nothing. Here in Cleveland, digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Jazz Chisholm Jr. Why the kick the pitch? Ball one oh. there. 1 0. That's a little bit low. Got to be real careful here. 2 0. He's hunting for his pitch. Hard right, ground ball, base now.
Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. That pretty much split the zone down the middle, and those are the ones where you got to make them pay. And now a chance to maybe get creative on offense with good speed on first. Now here's Bobby Witt Jr. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. And a foul ball. To the right side, Naylor to second, a sensational double play. The 3-6-1 double play, in my opinion, is one of the toughest plays to make. You've got a pitcher covering first, and the middle infielder throwing to a moving target. Everything has to be perfect, and right there, they made it look pretty easy. Brian De La Cruz digs in now. That's in for a strike. The wind of the pitch. They say it went. Oh, two. Next one just oh, misses. Oh. And a count one and two. It's a good take. Rip to third, but handled. And that'll end the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. And welcome back. Now here is Josh Naylor. The first base base. Cabrera back to work. And there's a strike. Swing and a miss. As he was out front that time. Our plate umpire, Earl Hendricks. Yeah, with Hendricks, boo, kind of interesting. He's a good, consistent umpire, but you do hear that he kind of favors one side of the plate more than the other. So it's really hard to know for sure, but I think that usually it has to do something with where he sets up prior to each pitch. Fires over to first. That's one out the bottom of the second. Well, that event seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three-pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at bat. Oscar Gonzalez, the next to hit. And that one pulled foul. Here comes the one Up the middle. Nice grab. And he beats it. That's a hit. Great try there. This is great work by the shortstop. He makes the throw across the diamond after the dive and just wasn't able to get it there in time. But I love how much he put into that play. And on the other side, he was really giving it his all down the line as well. Nice play on both ends. One down. Nick Gordon digs in for the Guardians. And that one lifted in the air center field. And that'll fall for a base hit. The throw to third. Not in time. He's safe. Well, that started and ended pretty quickly. No messing around right there. These days, most outfielders play pretty deep, and I'm not sure if that was a factor there or not, but off the bat, you're thinking it's going to be a pop out, and it just kind of nestled into that spot where no one was able to get to it. Runner in scoring position now, and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Brandon Marsh steps to the plate. Way outside, 1-0. Oh. Well, all eyes on the double play ball in this spot. No better way to get out of this inning. Check on the runner. Back in there standing. And now two and nothing. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. First and third. One down. Yeah. 
Lined, and that's a base hit. Run scores easily, and it's 1-0. Mission accomplished there as he picks up the RBI to give him the lead. Showed a willingness to drive that pitch the opposite way. Didn't get jumpy, didn't try to pull the ball. He let it get deep, took the barrel right to it, and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. And here's the catcher, Tyler Stevenson. And Cleveland on top one zip. A little roller up along first. The throw to second, throw to first, but he beat it. Steven Kwan will hit next. He's over one. Foul ball. Deal one. The other way, and that's just foul. This one in the dirt. Well done behind the dish. Runners on first and third, two away. Next pitch is inside. Two and two. Oh, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. The 2-2. Two, 3-2, two. Two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. Ahmed Rosario, next to bat for Cleveland. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Left-hand batter waits. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Left-hand hitter waits. And that one hit to first. Base hit and a run in to score. Man, that was a pretty good battle at the plate, and I'll tell you, it feels pretty good as a hitter when you grind out a hit like that. He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock, and you'll take that anytime you can get him to find a hole. Stepping in, Ahmed Rosario. Fly to right his first time. Bounce to third. Segura. Now a jump throw. That ends the oh. inning, and they limit the damage. So it's two runs on four hits, no errors, and a couple left on. We play two full. It's the Guardians two and the Marlins nothing. New inning getting started at the play. Jorge Soler. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. That's in there, and that's strike one. Soler measures six feet, four inches, 235 pounds. He joined the team as a free agent. Ramirez. And one away at the top of the third. Gene Segur at the plate here. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Well, the offense has gotten going, and a pitcher wants to go out there and have a real quick inning, get those guys back into the dugout so those bats can stay hot. Ball one, no strikes to Segura. Uh -uh, ball. Two balls, no strikes. Hit on the ground to the right side. Oh. And foul ball. Kicks and deals. Fouls one off. Two and two. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. The 2-2. Two -two. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Three. 
three two now really good take especially with two strikes the three two well, is well, off well, the well. outside edge and that is ball four well he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot hitter didn't okay. offer at it now he has somebody to worry about over at first Nick Fortes the next up for the Marlins in the dirt throw to second not in time he's there easily Segura into scoring position on the wild pitch and there goes the double play possibility well Boog not exactly making him earn it right now with the walk and now a wild pitch he's going to need to find a way to refocus out there get back in the strike zone before this unravels on him Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether. Ah, ground ball, and that's through the infield. Now a long throw home. It's offline. The run comes in, and it's a one run game. Well, back within one as he brings home the run. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch, just shot it through the infield. Back to the top of the Miami order. Here's Mookie Betts. Grounded out his first time up. That one back up the middle and it gets through. Headed for the plate. He'll score and they've tied it. It's 2-2. Two -two. Didn't take long to get a result for that at bat. Timing on the swing was good. Able to shoot the ball up the middle. Didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked, but that's a good approach paying off. One down, runner at first. And now John Birdie. First offering, and it just misses. Birdie in his fifth season, batting second in today's lineup. Usually a shortstop, but today he's starting at second base. The 1-0. One and one. This one kicks away a little as he can't squeeze it. Nice job behind the plate there. The pitch. Bounced out to short, and that one finds its way through. They get it in quickly. So first and second now, one out. That's three singles in a row. Now just one of those seen eye base three. hits through the infield. He just kind of rolled over on it a little bit, but sometimes those can find a hole and get you a knock. And now it's Garrett Cooper up to hit. 0 for 1. He struck out swinging last time. Laser could be extra bases. Flying around third is Betts. One runs in. Now the second run is in, and it's 4-2. Got to be feeling great about that double. Big spot, and he drives in, too. First pitch fastball in a great spot to do some damage, and he squared it up nicely. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. One for one with a single so far. In there for strike one. Well, a really rough inning out there on the mound. And uh, this is one of those where you learn a lot about a guy's toughness and his ability to turn the page and keep pressing forward. And the 0 1. And that one fouled off. Here's the 0-2. Look out! And it hit him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Boog, that wasn't even close. You know, sometimes a guy will barely miss the zone and hit someone, but right there, he completely lost the handle, and that's when it gets a little scary. Two 
squirts away a little bit and an excellent job keeping it right there. Runners at first and second with one gone. Jack swing went around and it's one and one. And the pitch. That's inside. And it's two and one. And that gets the inside corner for a strike. Getting a little frustrated with the strike zone. Swing and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. Here's the throw to the plate. It's offline and he scores. It's 5-2. Puts a run on the board and picks up an RBI. Everything was on time and fluid in that swing. Got a pitch he could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. And now for the Marlins, Brian De La Cruz. 0 for 1 so far. Ball one, no one strikes. Ball. One ball, no strikes. One out, runners at first and second. Ground ball right side could be two. Fires to second for one, and they bounce into two already. This one ends the third. But nine batters hit in the inning. Five come around to score. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. Marlins five, and the Guardians two. As we go to the last of the third, and now it's switch hitting third baseman Jose Ramirez. The wind of the pitch. Ramirez getting the start at the hot corner. 30 years old now, and he's won a silver slugger in the American League. And a pitch. So two balls and no strikes. Well, usually a high level of confidence when you're facing a young pitcher out there on the mound. In this situation, ahead 2-0, he's put himself in a really good spot. The 2-0 is in for a strike. Cold night tonight, Boog, and that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they are creeping into my mind right now. Yeah, the 2-1 hammered but foul. And the pitch. Spoils that one, and it remains 2-2. Two and two. Righty to the plate. Come back to the mound. Whips it to first on the run. And he'll be safe at first. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night. And just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. So next will be the four-hole hitter for the Guardians, Andres Jimenez. He's 0 for 1. And first offering is fouled off. pitch sliced hard but foul this is a very important inning here after scoring all those runs you want your pitcher to come out and just mow them down the offense has worked hard it's shut down inning time little trouble with this one behind the plate to second but way too late safe there so a wild pitch allows the runner to advance well, that's part of the risk when you throw a breaking ball in the dirt. Even as good as catchers are these days at blocking pitches, that one just got away enough, and that takes the double play opportunity away for now. And now the count oh. is even. No outs, runner on second. 
And that one is lifted in the air. Diving, makes the grab. Tags up from second, and he'll head to third. This dive wasn't the result of a bad route, Singy. The only reason he made the play is because his route was so good. No doubt, Boog. StatCast tells the same story. I mean, he got to a spot as quickly as you can possibly get there, and he had to in order to have a chance at that diving play. Just special. And now it's Josh Naylor. First pitch oh. doesn't find the zone. There's a strike. One and one. Runner on at third, one gone. The next pitch misses, and that's ball two. On the ground, right side. Now two away as they get a run across. Stepping up for the Guardians, Oscar Gonzalez. Reached on an infield single his first time. And there's a foul ball. Next pitch oh. misses inside at one and one. Yeah. And he flips a breaking ball in there or a changeup. Either one, <laughs> something off speed. Good arm action on it, whatever it was. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. So it's one run, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on. We played three here in game five. Marlins five and the Guardians three. As we go to the top of the fourth, and now the DH, Jorge Soler. Jorge Soler. All right, Siggy, trivia time. Back when this ballpark opened, 1994, one future Hall of Famer hit the first triple in the park and another hit the first homer by a Cleveland player. Think you know who they were? Okay, I know that Ken Griffey Jr. hit the first triple here, but first yeah. homer for Cleveland. Uh, give me a hint. Switch hitter, that's all you're getting. Oh, dude, Eddie Murray, no doubt. Bam! Yeah. Next offering is in for a strike. One, two. Fights it off, he'll see another. Next pitch misses way outside. Clearly, he hasn't had it in this game, and looks like sooner than later, they're going to have to go to the bullpen. Comes a 2 2. Got him looking, and now one away. And at the play for Miami, Gene Segura. He walked and came around to score his first time up. Bounce to the right, Naylor. The flip to the pitcher covering. Two quick outs here in the top of the four. Here's the catcher to hit, Nick Fortes. Singled and scored his first time. This is important. Yeah. If he can go one, two, three here, will be a very positive sign for him and for his team. And a foul ball. Oh, and two now. And downstairs. Oh, 
it goes down looking. Offense held a check there. On now to the bottom of the fourth. Marlins five near the Guardians three. Welcome back. John Chami and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, Nick Gordon. comes a pinch out to short wit zips it across leadoff hitter retired in the fourth Center field, number 16. so in now for Cleveland Brandon Marsh singled and drove in a run his first time through In there, and it's 0 1. 0 1. Now 1 and 1. Next pitch is outside. Into center. Nice grab on the run. And there's two away. Up next to Cleveland. The catcher. Tyler. And now the catcher comes up to him. Tyler Stevenson. Oh for one, he hit into a fielder's choice his first time. It's amazing. We get a chance to talk to a lot of opposing managers. This guy scares managers on the other team as much as anyone and he gets to fly beneath the radar with the other more recognizable names in this lineup that one misses two balls no strikes when you get ahead in the count there's no doubt that the success rate goes up and that's what he's been doing it's made a big impact for him in recent games Next one is and off the plate. The and now 3 0. Oh. A rare three ball count three here. He's been throwing strikes all day. Got to be ready to hit if you're in the box. 3 0 oh down. Good plate oh, appearance boy, there. Away. Able to take the walk. Close pitch there, but you've got to forget about that call if you're no out on the mound. You can't let it affect you going forward. You've got to get out of the inning first. And then if you want to be frustrated, take it out in the dugout. Juan lays nope. off down low as he digs in for the third time. One out. That catches the outside corner, and the count one is one and one. Two outs. In the dirt, blocked. The tag, and that's out number three, inning over. Three up, three down for him there. We played four. Marlins five, and the Guardians three. We go to the top of the fifth, and now the right fielder, Mookie Betts. Singy, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon oh. the way he prepares and gets ready for the ball game. I tell you what, his teammates feed off of the leadership that he shows on and off the field. Pop foul out of play off to the right. And a curve is down and in. Two one. Next pitch misses. Three and one. Three one. On the corner for a strike. Full count. and misses it's a strikeout the 
John Birdie, the next up for the Marlins. John One for two. Birdie. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. That clips a corner. Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. You got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing up there most of the time. The 0-2. Lifted in the air, right field. Grabs it on the run. Two down. Well, that's a tough play for the infielder, ranging back into the outfield. There's part of him that's saying, hey, where are you at, outfielder? Call me off. But he stayed focused and made a nice catch right there. And here's the first baseman, Garrett Cooper. And that's in there for strike one. And a pitch. Off the mark there, and it's one and one. That one missed. Swings and misses. And out two and two. Well, and those hitters count sometimes can be a little too aggressive, and a good pitcher will play off of that. He's got to get a better pitch to hit. Right-hander kicks deals. Battling here as he fouls it away. Knocks it down. But in time, nice job to stay with it to end the inning. We head to the bottom of the fifth, and the batter now, Stephen Kwan. And the right hander back to work. And that clips the inside corner. You know, these Guardians doing a good job of simply getting the bat on the ball in this game, and the numbers back that up. The numbers tell us they're averaging more than a hit every inning, and they've only struck out twice, so they keep finding ways to put their bat on the ball. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Just a cookie down the middle. I mean, those are the ones you dream about. Ones in the cage you're just hoping you get in the ball game. Right down the middle, not a whole lot of velocity, right on top of it. And up next for Cleveland, Ahmed Rosario. First offering, misses the mark. One ball, no strike. Next offering is in for a strike. One ball, one strike. Runner at first with no outs here. Now he can't squeeze it behind the plate. And now a man into scoring position. Had some real trouble with the pitch there. That's one he should have had. And that essentially turns that leadoff single into a leadoff double. Takes away any chance of neutralizing it with the double play ball. And here it comes. Strike on the inside corner. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Quan around third. In there safely. And they trail by one. Well, here we are, third time through the order, and this is where we see the OPS jump off. Manager might have to go to the bullpen a little bit sooner than he anticipated. Here's Jose Ramirez. High fly ball lifted in the air right field. Bet settles underneath it, and it's caught for the out. 
As good as he's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand, you cannot yeah, hang a breaking ball breaking. right there. Lucky it stayed in the ballpark. So now it's the four hole hitter, Andres Jimenez. And remember, he was absolutely robbed of a base hit last time up. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. Move to first. Oh, they got him leaning. He's out. I think the base runner was trying to catch him off guard, perhaps looking to steal right away and wasn't ready to get back to first. Nice pickoff move by the pitcher. That misses the zone. Ball one. Just off the outside part of the plate. This ball's chopped on the ground. Over to Cooper, and that is the inning. So one run in the inning on this base hit. It's now a 5-4 ball game. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Eli Morgan. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their guys a chance to fight back into the game. And now, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Chisholm, in his fourth year, 25 years old, and he won the Silver Slugger at his position in the National League last year. And that is in for a strike. It's 0-1. Well, that's really the money spot. Down and away, if you can locate that consistently, it's going to be real tough for guys to square that up. That's what you love to see relievers do coming out of that bullpen. The wind and the pitch. Good eye in that spot. Too close for me, partner, to take that 0-2 fastball, but... For whatever reasons, he let it go by. He's still in the at-bat. I don't think he'll let the next one go. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. No messing around with the pitch calling in that sequence right there. Four pitches, all fastballs. Yeah, and that makes me think that was the plan before the at-bat even started. If you think you can simply just beat a guy with only your fastball, why throw him anything else until he shows you he can handle it? And now, Bobby Witt, Jr., Really nice swing in his last at bat. Shot a line drive into center field. Check swing. Nope, no appeal. Ball. And it's one and oh. That one fouled off. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss, and he was fooled. Movement in the pen for the Guardians. Trevor Steffen, a right-hander with big strikeout stuff, is getting it fired up. One down, base is empty. And that one missing low. Stays alive. Two two now. And now the count filled up three and two. And there's ball four. How big a deal is that walk? I don't think it's a big deal because if you pitch to the previous hitter with the power he has, he can hit a home run. I think it was a calculated walk. We'll see how it pays off here. Morgan checks the runner, and he's back safely. Morgan measures 5 feet 10 inches, 26 years old, and he was drafted in the eighth round back in 2017. Popped up, foul territory behind the plate. Stevenson right there to make the grab. That's out number two. Up next to the Marlowe. The designated hitter, Jorge 
Soler. Jorge Soler up at the plate. Morgan throws over back standing he's in there safely and he hits a ground ball right side Jimenez throw to first and that is the third out of the inning nothing across no hits no errors and a runner left we go to the bottom half of inning number six and the five six seven slots do a Marlins five Indians four. So the Marlins go with a new arm. Sixto Sanchez. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Well, one run game. Stepping up for the Guardians. Josh Naylor. The pitch. And a swing and a miss. Action in the pen down there. Steven Okert getting loose out there. Barnes, the right-hander, loosening up as well. And he deals. Popped up. Birdie drifts towards it. Drops into the glove. And there's one down. Well, that was a pitch you got to crush. Unbelievable that he missed it right there. And I'm telling you, he is going to be frustrated with himself until this next at bat. And now here's a speed threat. Outfielder Oscar Gonzalez. Well, with both starters out of this ball game, it now becomes a battle of the bullpens and just seeing which manager can match up better and who's able to get to the finish line. And the first pitch misses for ball one. That's down and in. Two and out. Righty delivers. Out front, rip foul. And the two two. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. He's really good hitting the baseball the other way, so credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch. Clearly, he had him full. Now, Nick Gordon. In there for strike one. And the right hater deals. There's a strike, 95 of that one. Can't connect on the curveball, struck him out. Guardians go down one, two, three. Still down a run. It's five to four. On the mound now, Trevor Steffen. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. And now for the Marlins, Gene Segura. The pitch. That misses, ball one. You see the velocity, 97 with that fastball. Two balls, no strike. Inside corner for a strike, and it's two and one. There's a strike. And a swing and a miss. One gone here. 
First strikeout for him in this one. That splitter is maybe the go-to pitch when he's looking for a swing and miss like that. He throws it quite a bit, and that's a good example of the effect it can have on a hitter. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. First pitch, and he just misses. At the belt and fires. Outside. Misses with the 2 0, and he's fired three straight outside the strike zone. That just missed. He walked him on four pitches. That just came apart right there. Four pitch walk, and the guy at the plate was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. Here's Mookie to hit. Got to be careful with a slugger like this because he could turn it into a three run game in the blink of an eye. That one's in there on one. Well, they say it's the best pitch in baseball. Strike one. You get ahead on a good hitter as well. He's a little bit more confidence to move to the at bat. Next offering no, is downstairs. One and one. Kicks and fires. Got him swinging. That's about as nasty of a splitter as you'll come across, especially in terms of movement. I mean, that thing tumbles out of his hand and just drops off the table at the last moment. If he keeps it down, it's just so tough to put wood on. Birdie stands in here, leaves that one off the inside. That pitch in for a strike and a count even one and one. Now just a cement mixer slider right there. It's a great pitch to hit if you can recognize it early and jump on it. They say it went. Pitch. Gets a piece and stays alive. Fights that one away, still one and two. Well, he got challenged with a good fastball right there, just couldn't catch up. One and two now. Swings through that one, it's a strikeout. That's his second strikeout. One left for Miami. They lead it 5 4. Back here in Cleveland. Now here is Brandon Marsh. Sanchez back to work. That's the third. Segura throw to first. And the leadoff hitter set down to open the seventh. Now so up next, Tyler Stevenson. On the ground to short, Witt. Sends it across to first, and a couple of quick outs. Now got that. Let's do it. Steven Oker comes on now. He's into the game with the bases empty. Now So in now for Cleveland, Steven Kwan. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. And what you tell yourself is I want to stay square to the plate. 
They try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Fastball, well, and he gets out of the way. Oh, the adrenaline's pumping right there. Pretty good fastball. Unfortunately, he got away from him. He's going to have to corral things a little bit. The tying run at the plate. Strike two. I think he was sitting off speed there. Swing at a ball lifted to center field. Chisholm pulls it down, and that is that. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left. Eighth inning coming up. Marlins five and the Guardians four. The Guardians going with a new pitcher, Nick Sandlin. And this could be a pretty critical point in this game. They're hoping he's the guy to keep him within striking distance. And at the plate for Miami, Garrett Cooper, one for three. And a pitch. That one down the line, and it goes just foul. Oh, and two as he waves at that one. From a pitcher's perspective, that's a beautiful splitter right there. As a hitter, you don't like it, but he's commanded his fastball, and out of that same tunnel, that splitter comes, and the bottom just falls out of it. Next one misses. One and two to count. Out to short. First out in the top of the eighth. Now here's the cleanup hitter for Miami, Jazz Chisholm Jr. That misses the zone, and that's ball one. And that's in for a strike. Let's see if he's willing to use the whole field right here. Definitely pounding him away. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Next pitch is downstairs. Good job to fight that one off. Two two down. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Right-handed reliever. Bows it back with two strikes. Also really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Gives him the ability to foul off tough pitches. Struck him out looking. That was a pretty fun at bat right there, but you kind of hate to see a long battle like that end on a questionable call. I think he was right in letting it go. Frustrating result after he fought so hard at the plate. Two outs, base is empty. And the batter will be the shortstop, Bobby Witt Jr. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. But why to kick the pitch? That misses the, the zone. One ball, one strike. One and one. That one drifts inside. The wind of the pitch. 
And another ball. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. Swings and misses, and we're filled up. Next offering is fouled back. The wind of the pitch. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. Slider got him for strike three. Three up, three down that time. Last half of the eighth coming up. Marlins five and the Guardians four. So they turn things over to the righty, Anthony Bender. And this guy can bring it velocity-wise. Stepping up for the Guardians, Ahmed Rosario. And the pitch. And ball one. Miami's bullpen with some action. Dylan Floro up and loosening in the pen. You know this guy's great speed is in the back of that pitcher's mind. If he can get on, it's going to give him one more thing he's got to think about. And that's ripped for a base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. That's back-to-back -back singles for him. That's now, about now, as now. textbook as it gets. Got his stride load out of the way early. Stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. And now let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases. No outs, runner at first. Here's the third baseman, Jose Ramirez. That clips the corner. If you're a base runner, you gotta stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Nobody out, runner at first. with two strikes may see some movement over there at first base trying to stay out of a double play here knocks that one away and we'll do it again and a pitch just off the outside corner it's a ball in two strikes Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Lead runner makes the turn at second. And now runners at the corners. Nobody out. No, that at bat had a lot riding on it. Certainly a pivotal swing of the bat in this ball game. Couldn't get any air under it, but he smoked that ball back up the middle. Timing was just perfect. Got great wood on it, and there's just no chance for the infielders with how hard he hit it. So now it just comes down to situational hitting to get the tying run home. They've got a really great opportunity to do that. Bender checks over to first, and he's back. Digging in, Andres Jimenez. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Lots of anxious fans in the ballpark right now. You can feel it. Two balls, no strikes to count. But I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. The 2-0 is in for a strike. The pitch. On the ground, a second might be two. There's one. They get the out, but the run scores on the twin killer. First and third, nobody out. You're thinking you've got it lined up for a pretty big inning right here. So that double play is pretty deflating. They get the run in, but now they're starting all over. Here's Josh Naylor. Swing and a pop-up in foul ground. And puts the squeeze on that one. And that is the inning. 
So they even it up here as we head for a good finish to this one. We're on to the ninth now in game five. We're all tied up 5-5. Five -five. We're back. It's the top of the ninth. And there's a new pitcher on the mound. James Karinchek. Brian De La Cruz getting ready to hit. Karinchek, the 6'3 righty, 215 pounds, and he was a ninth round draft pick back in 2017. Pitch misses outside, and that's ball one. And the righty deals. Cleveland has some action going in their pen. Sam Hentges getting ready to go. Good hitters count the 2 0. Fought off foul. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. He swings and fouls one off. The next offering misses, and it's three and two. Jorge Soler. Waits on deck for Miami. Line drive, and it's just foul. That was close. A little tardy on that fastball. He's going to have to get it going a little quicker, get that front foot down. The pitch. And that's ball four. Very close off the outside corner. Could have easily been called a strike in that location. So a change being made at first base. Coming in as the pinch runner, Garrett Hampson. Go ahead, run on base. Jorge Soler, the next up for the Marlins. Squares, pushes at it, misses it. It's a strike. 0 and 1. Right hander kicks, deals, puts a bunt down. Naylor tossed the second over to first, safe. Gene Segura, the next up for the Marlins. And first offering is fouled off. And a pitch. And takes low for ball one. Way to lay off that pitch down. Righty to the plate. Cut on and miss. Struck him out. Two away. Good horizontal movement on that curveball right there. And just enough to get him to chase it. He placed it just off the corner. And that's one of those where a pitcher says if he's going to miss, he's going to miss off the plate. So really good job. Great pitch for the punch out. And up next for Miami, Nick Fortes. First pitch just misses. Two outs. Foul ball there. 
Really going after him here. All fastballs to get ahead in the count. Kicks and deals. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. No runs on no hits, no errors, and one man left. Six, seven, eight scheduled to start the bottom of the ninth. We're all tied up 5-5. Five, five. Now into the game, Garrett Hampson. He'll be out in left field. They hand the ball over to a new arm, Tanner Scott. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. Oscar Gonzalez digs in for the Guardians. Now this guy, a player that, if he gets on base, has the ability to really be aggressive getting around the base paths. And he deals. On the ground right side. Down the line and it's foul. Yeah. In there at the knees. 0-2 oh, now. Signs of activity in the pen for the Marlins. Matt Barnes, the veteran right-hander, appears to be loosening up. Here comes a pitch. On the ground to third. Zips it to first. And they get the leadoff man in the ninth. That's what a good sinker is designed to do. Get a guy to roll over a little bit. Hit the ball on the ground. Kill some worms while you're at it. And here is Nick Gordon. Three pitch strikeout last time up. Got to put up more of a fight in this one. First offering misses the mark. Just missed. Two one now. Brandon Marsh on deck for the Guardians. All tied up here. The last half of inning number nine. And it's filled up. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Well, a breaking ball in that 3-2 count kind of tells you that that's the pitch he has the most confidence in right now. Just couldn't find the strike zone. Here at the bottom of the ninth, one out. And up next for Cleveland, Brandon Marsh. Swings and misses. That's strike one. Always tough to turn two on a speedster like this. It's even harder with him coming out of the left-handed batter's box. You really need something to hit hard on the ground that they can handle to turn two quickly. Here comes the 0-1. Tried to check his swing. Appeal to third. And yes, he did. He went around. One down, winning run on first. Foul off the plate. They'll do it again. Swing and a miss. That's a strikeout. Blew the express right by his bat for strike three. Well, I love to see guys compete, and I know he's frustrated that he wasn't able to do anything with that pitch. You see it so well, but you have to respect the upper 90s velocity. Man, it is hard to catch up to. Tyler Stevenson digs in for the Guardians. And the first pitch misses for ball one.
Two outs, but the winning run is at first. And there's a ball. Next offering is in for a strike. Really Number nice one. spot there on that 2 0 to get back in the count. I mean, hitters looking to turn on something, but tough pitch like that, he's just going to take it. In the air, right field. Bets on the move. Pulls it down, and he makes the catch. And that's the inning. One left for the Guardians, and this remains a 5 5 ball game. Back here at the ballpark. Here's Mookie now. Oh, look out here. He's going to come up ready to swing in this situation. Karen check. Back to work. There's the strike. In the air to left center. Marsh makes the catch. One down. And here is John Birdie. John Birdie. That pitch clips the outside corner. Strike one. All tied up and here in extra innings. And the 2 Check swing, no appeal. Next offering is foul back. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Flew open a little bit with that front shoulder, but was able to slow his bat down just enough to make contact with that pitch. Keep the bat alive. Just off the outside edge. Two and two. That's a really good take. And now it's filled up. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Want to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing. That high fastball, you have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. And a swing and a miss. The hat trick. Two gone now. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. And now the first baseman, Garrett Cooper. Sharp grounder, that's through for a base hit. Waste no time there. He put a great swing on that ball. Took the barrel right to it. Nice extension as well. 105 exit velocity. That tells you everything you need to know about that swing. And next will be the cleanup hitter. Jazz Chisholm Jr. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. And the right-hander deals. In the dirt, but kept close. Low throw, and he can't take it out. And he's in to score in position with two gone on the wild pitch. Well, Boog, it can be tough to get a good grip on the baseball when it's cold outside, and that's definitely the case right now here in the ballpark. It could have been something else, but I definitely know that feeling when your fingertips are numb and you really can't feel the baseball. Nope. Falling behind two and one. And that one off the outside edge. I almost feel like he's frustrated a little bit. He wants to be challenged. Bobby Witt Jr. to bat next. Yeah. 
And the 3-1. 3-1, and he couldn't come up with it. Sam Henches will take over here. And he's had three days off since he pitched last, so expect him to be totally rested. I'm sure he's itching for this opportunity right now. And now the shortstop, Bobby Witt Jr. A strikeout and a walk. He's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion and he's in full speed and that's in there for strike one first and second two down on the ground to third knocks it down to the hole always feels amazing getting a job done when the team needs you to come yeah, yeah. through. It's just bigger than your own individual stats. Pretty much did the opposite of what you want to do with the pitch on the outside part of the plate like that. Just rolled over, but good hustle down the line and got the infield knock. Now that sets up a huge at bat in this ball game. Garrett Hampson, the next to hit, takes low for a ball. Came into the game as a pinch runner. This is his first trip to the plate in this one. The lefty, the 1 0. -oh. And that's in for a strike. Activity in the bullpen. Emmanuel Classe, the closer, is getting loose. All loaded up here in extra innings. Swings through that one for strike two. It might be time to choke up a little bit, get that front foot down early, maybe even just spread out. He's really late right now. Fouls it off, still one and two. Caught him looking for the K. He's in a tough spot, had to make a great pitch, did it, got the strikeout, gets out of the jam. Clearly, he's happy with those results. We're in extras here. Now the left fielder, Stephen Kwan. No left fielder. The pitch. There's a strike. And I know you want to be patient as a hitter, but you got to be ready to jump on the first thing straight. And he got one right there, but left the bat on his shoulder. Strike two. Wow. Good luck catching up to that one. And here it comes. Pitch misses. It's a ball and two strikes. O2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him off. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. And it's even up. <laughs> Swings and misses. Struck him out. Came inside with that two-strike fastball nicely and just bunched him up on the inside part of the plate. Couldn't get around on it and catch it out front. Many times if you do, it's a foul ball. And you know a lot of pitchers, they really don't like working inside with two strikes because they do not want to hit that batter. And when they've got him up against the ropes, got to figure out a way to put him away. Did a nice job right there. Yeah, the batter now, Ahmed Rosario. And now the lefty, that catches the corner. One and one. And the slider just misses. Really been able to slow down the game tonight with his at-bats, and the biggest one he's had so far, he doesn't look anxious at all. Now a pop-up on the infield. 
Cooper makes the grab for the second out. That was a good, hard fastball with some nice ride up in the zone right there. Hitter looked like he was on it, but I think that velocity at the end just beat him. Instead of a line drive or something hit deep, it's a pop-up and an easy out for the defense. That's towards center. That gets down for a hit. Hitting is really easy for some guys. One thing that I can see already, his bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time. And guys like that, they have a high contact rate and they have more barrels because of that bat being on plane. And even when you don't get it great, it's still hit hard enough to dunk something in like that in front of the center fielder. Snap throw to first, hey, and he's back in there. Now at the plate, Andres Jimenez. That one misses, and that is ball one. Left hand hitter waits. Just off the inside edge. And that one is inside. Josh Naylor next to bat for Cleveland. Here's a 3 0. That clips the corner. Yeah, there's the strike. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. And that's just foul. Next offering is foul back. So now two on and two outs. Well, that could be a big walk in this ball game. Moves the go-ahead run into scoring position. So some pressure pitches coming up in this next A-B. Matt Barnes gets the nod out of the bullpen. So in now for Cleveland, Josh Naylor. Oh, how he'd love to walk it off right here. And fouled off. Next offering is outside. And it is two and one. It's a big opportunity right here, but I love the way he's slowing the game down. He's shrinking his zone, making sure he gets the pitch that he wants to hit. Two and one now, two aboard. Two balls, two strikes. Winning run stands at second. Here's a 2-2. Right through there. Got him. They miss a big chance to take the lead here late. Two left on. We push on to the 11th. We're all tied up 5-5. Five -five. Back now at Progressive Field. Now it's the DH, Jorge Soler. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. There's a strike. And 
And that one clips the corner. Going to now. Got him swinging. It's a strikeout. The high heat too much on that one. Just blown away in that at bat. Three fastballs, all strikes. He wasn't even able to foul one off. There's not much you can take away from an at bat like that as a hitter other than maybe there's something wrong with your eyes. Got to have better timing on the fastball next time. Now it's going to be Gene Segura. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Kicks and deals. Turned on, but that's foul down the third baseline. All tied up. We are in the 11th. So now one and two. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the frame, and that's now three in a row. Yeah, he's really settling in and getting a feel for his pitches, throwing them where he wants to right now. So we'll see how long he can keep this streak going. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Hey, seven straight strikes to start the frame. He's got a chance at an immaculate inning. And a foul ball. The 0 2. Now a check One swing, point. but he held up. Got close to the immaculate inning, and he just couldn't find the zone right there. When you think about it, nine straight strikes, so tough to do. And a ball in two strikes. And now two oh. and two. And down on strikes. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. And the Marlins down quietly. This ball game still tied five all. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Now it's the right fielder, Oscar Gonzalez. And a pitch. Just missed. And yeah, that's too high. Next pitch inside. And that's ball three. Nick Gordon on deck for the Guardians. Three oh down. And now three and one. One way to make a guy real uncomfortable at the plate is pound him inside with good velocity. They're doing that right here. Three one now. And it's fouled away. Three and two. Payoff pitch. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. No, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Left hand batter waits. Pitch misses there. Two and oh. A swing and a miss, and that's strike one. Fouled off. He was late.
at the belt and fires. Ground ball left side and it goes just foul. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Chisholm has this one sized up. Puts the squeeze on that one. And there's two down. Brandon Marsh digs in now. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Just missed. Swing and a miss. And the count one and two. And that skips into dirt. And that one almost got him. Swing and a miss, and that is that. Nothing doing for the Guardians there. Our score holds at five apiece. And welcome back. And now the right fielder, Mookie Betts. Henches measures six feet, six inches, 26 years old. And he was drafted in the fourth round back in 2014. First pitch just misses. Line to right, and this one could be extra bases. And now it gets into the corner. In safely with a leadoff double, go-ahead runs in scoring position. Man, those are the types of hits where you don't feel any vibration in your hands whatsoever. Such a good feeling. He really shot that one down the right field line and somehow found a way to keep it from slicing foul. One thing that was great about the approach is head was down all the way through the pitch, and that's how you do it. Had a huge opportunity now to grab the lead at this point in the game. And now it's going to be John Birdie. Fastball for a strike. Going on. Go ahead, run in scoring position. Nobody out. Fastball right back to the mound. In plenty of time to first. That's it out. Now Garrett Cooper, the next up for the Marlins. So he came out clutch earlier in this ball game and really just needs to take the same approach. Think hard right back up the middle. Check swing, appeal to first. And he won around just enough that time. Strike two. Ooh, oh, Baya. Oh, oh, you got to remember to take the donut off the bat, partner. One out. The go-ahead run is at second. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Nice work there to get the strikeout, and that's a big second out. I'll tell you, this home crowd will be fired up. They can get out of this and leave that go-ahead run stranded in scoring position. This is a big moment in this game. Jazz Chisholm Jr., the next up for the Marlins, known for his late-inning heroics. In there at the knees, strike one. Looked like it was a little bit up. Yeah, now two balls and a strike. Called 
strike right there. Here's a rip to short, but he's there for the third out. And a new pitcher on the mound in the bottom half of the inning, A.J. Puck. A.J. Puck. Here's the catcher, Tyler Stevenson. The catcher, Tyler Stevenson. And the pitch. That's in there, and that is strike one. And that's outside. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Kicks and fires. Way high. Two two. Fights it off. You'll see another. The pitch in the air right field Betts puts it away and there's one away the bat, the the left field. Field. back to the top of the lineup here's the left fielder Stephen Kwan First offering misses the mark. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. Next offering upstairs. The plate umpire is trying to tighten things up a little bit. Ahmed Rosario waiting for a turn at the plate. All tied up and here in extra innings. Popped in the air, left side. Segura under it. Makes the grab. And there are two outs. Now that's <laughs> Here's the shortstop at the play. Ahmed Rosario. Swing and a ball popped up. Witt drifts towards it. He makes the grab. And that is that. Nothing across here this half. No end in sight. The 13th coming up. We're all tied up 5-5. Welcome back. Inning number 13 set to go. And now here is Bobby Witt Jr. Henches back to work. Swinging a foul straight back. The wide to kick the pitch. Off the plate, and the count is one and one. One and one. pitch 
Foul ball still a one and two count. The wind and the pitch. Fights that one away, still one and two. You're always having a tough time getting a pitch by him as a hitter. You feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. Next offering misses, and the count's even at two. And that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. Fly ball down the line. Gonzalez trying to get there. And there's one down. Here's Garrett Hampson caught looking his first time up. This is a guy you got to keep an eye on when he digs in. Definitely been known to drop a drag bunt from time to time, and he's pretty good at it, Chris. Yeah, and he creates a, a sense of urgency for the defense because of the speed, because of the ability to put down that bunt. All tied up here in extra innings. Swing and a line drive, slicing into right field. And there's two down. Man, if that drops right there, they would have gotten the potential winning run on base, maybe even in the scoring position. But that's just one of those hang with them. Now here's the Marlins DH. Jorge Soler. Struck out on just three pitches last time. And there's the strike. Now you see even sluggers from time to time try and use the bunt really as a way to beat the shift. Pitch is in for a strike, and it's 0-2. 0-2 now. Got it by him for the K. Here in Cleveland, now the third baseman, Jose Ramirez. And a pitch. There's a strike. Late in the game, everyone gets a little tighter. Way to get ahead on a really good hitter right there. Next offering is in for a strike. Quickly in an 0-2 hole, you're going to have to give something up here in terms of power if you want to put the ball in play with any authority. Here's the 0-2. Battling here as he fouls it away. And 1-2. One, one ball, two strikes. And the pitch. Misses outside. Two balls, two strikes. This guy's a fun guy to watch taking it bad. He just battles up there. He doesn't take a pitch off at all. Makes it so difficult on the pitchers out there. You can tell they get frustrated with how long it takes to put him away. Next offering upstairs. He really committed to that fastball up at the top of the zone. He knows that if he makes a mistake in the zone, it gets hit hard by a power guy like this. That's a nice miss right there. Pitch stays alive. Here comes a pitch chopped out in front of the plate, and no throw. He's into first easily. It was a healthy cut, but the same can't be said for the contact. He got just enough of the ball to put it in play, and that's all he needed. Tough play for the defense on what was kind of a swinging bunt. So here's the cleanup hitter, Andres Jimenez. Trying to move him over here. Cooper goes to second. Safe there. Safe at first as they can't make the play. 
Sometimes you can get a little too aggressive trying to cut off that lead run and try to make something happen that really isn't there. Got to take that sure out at first base. Not sure what happened right there in terms of communication. Josh Naylor digs in for the Guardians. Trying to move the runners over. Over to Cooper. Runners advance on a good sack bunt. Now it's the right fielder, Oscar Gonzalez. Well, first base open. Really no reason to pitch to this hitter right here. Put him on, have the force at second first, perhaps getting any ending double play. Calling for the intentional walk, and that loads up the bases. And the force play is now in order. Nick Gordon digs in for the Guardians. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. That's in there. That's strike one. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. And now the lefty. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Going to really need to hang in there with that front side against this left-handed breaking ball. Pitch misses, and a count one and two. Rarely will you see a pitcher just waste a pitch like that. The batter wasn't even tempted to swing. Every pitch needs to have a purpose so that it can set up a following pitch to help you get that out. Left-hand hitter waits. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Certainly a strikeout situation right there. The infield playing back, and this pitcher has to step up and get the swing and miss. Really nice job of attacking the hitter at the plate. Pretty big two out at bat coming up now. Here's the center fielder, Brandon Marsh. And a foul ball. Way out front for strike two. A pitch started in and ended up on the outside edge. Just changing planes and very difficult, especially for a left-handed hitter to track. Here the bottom of the third tee, two outs. Got him swinging for the strikeout. Couldn't hit the fastball at the knees. Huge opportunity missed there. We'll keep pushing on. We're all tied up 5-5. Five -five. So Cleveland brings on a new reliever, Emmanuel Classe. He has a great slider with tons of movement. And now for the Marlins, Gene Segura. And a pitch. On the inside corner for a strike. there for a strike at the bottom of the zone just a really nice slider down and in there he wants to get the hitter thinking fastball speed him up and just subtract some velocity and add a little movement that one misses in the dirt
Good eye right there. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Bogey just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count up at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. And now, Nick Fortes. That's in there. And it's 0-1. All tied up here in the bottom of the 14th. Right-handed reliever. And now one and two. Movement in the bullpen. Caleb Barriker up and throwing for Terry Francona. Got him swinging. Very strong coming out of the pen so far as he punches out the first two batters he's faced in this one. Getting straight to work. Man, it's talked about a lot, but relievers are just so electric these days. These aren't fun at bats if you're a hitter. I'm so glad I'm retired. So the batting order turns over. Now it's Mookie Betts. Pitch misses inside. 1-0. And the righty deals. No, that missed. That's the ball. And that's a little bit high. Three balls, no strikes. John Birdie in the on deck circle. There's a strike, three and one. They say you win. Out towards left center. Marsh moves under it. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. for the Marlins Dylan Floro your attention please now pitching for Miami number 36 Dylan Floro Tyler Stevenson now at the plate the line of the pitch that clips the inside corner for a strike Fouled off left side. The 0-2. And ball one. Just missed. Swings and misses. Struck him out. So the Guardians lineup turns over. Stephen Kwan digs in for the Guardians. In there and it's on one. Meanwhile. Activity in the bullpen. Johnny Cueto preparing to come on if needed. Oh, 
and two now. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. Well, you put good velocity in the head of the hitter. He's got to get it ready early and then change speeds. Keep him off balance. That's the goal. Back foot slider ties him up, struck him out. Now the number no two hitter, Ahmed Rosario. That one misses, and it's one to know. And that's in for a strike. The wind of the pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Fouls that off to the left, and we'll do it again. The one-two. Chases the fastball up the ladder, struck him out. here at the ballpark all set for the start of the inning now here is John Birdie and he deals ball one there it's getting squeezed a little bit here late next offering is in for a strike that was absolute gas. Triple digits on the gun. It's just a different experience as a hitter watching that go by. That one missing inside. Right-hander kicks deals. This one popped up. Foul ground first base side. And there's one down. Here's the first baseman, Garrett Cooper. And the first pitch misses for ball one. They say you win. Pitch. That to right. Gonzalez makes the catch. Two down. Jazz Chisholm Jr. will hit next. And that one fouled off. All tied up. And here in extra innings. Next pitch downstairs. Ball one. And a strike. Here's a one-two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Nothing doing here this half. Another chance to win it. Home half of the inning coming up. We're all tied up 5-5. Five, five. Back now at Progressive Field. Now it's Jose Ramirez. The third baseman. Floro back to work. And there's a ball. Mm -hmm. 
And now two and one after that missed inside. When you get to this part of the order, yeah, there's some pop there, but more likely there's some base hits. So very important yeah. to be patient. Let the pitcher walk you, if he will. Two two, two now. Whoa, they threw that one behind him. Out towards right center field. Witt sizing this one up. Makes the grab on the run. One up, one down. Andres Jimenez digs in for the Guardians. That one outside. Ball one. And yeah, that's downstairs and outside. The wind to kick the 2 0. Josh Naylor next to bat for Cleveland. Here's a 3 0. And yeah, there's Paul Ford. And he's a guy that will certainly think about stealing a bag or two. Not the kind of speed you want to put on base in a tie game. Josh Naylor digs in for the Guardians. And the first pitch misses for ball one. One down, winning run on at first. That's a strike. And now it's even one and one. Swing and a miss. Threw that fastball right by him, slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. Floro keeping him close. Back over to first, and they're keeping him close. Tied up here in extra innings. Floro picks oh. over and he's back in standing. The one two. And that's down and away. So here we go. Base runner at first could be running on the pitch. He's got good enough speed to steal the bag to get in scoring position, even if it's a swing and miss at the plate. 3 2. And he walked him. He's making things difficult for himself right now out there on the mound, but, you know, his confidence should still be high enough to get out of this, but he's going to have to buckle down right here. Oscar Gonzalez, the next to hit. That yeah. one's in there, 0 and 1. At the dish, looking to lift the ball in the air in this spot. Anything but the inning, inning double play, boo. The pitch. Yeah. Strike two. Okay. One away, and the game winning run stands at second. This one in the air, center field. Chisholm makes the grab and there's two out. Now the designated hitter. And next is the designated hitter, Nick Gordon. It's a good spot to be in. If runners on first and second, you know the pitcher is going to come after you.
That's in for a strike. And it's quickly nothing in two on the designated hitter. The 2 Just a slow ground ball this time. They get the force. That's out number three. Back now, we're in extras. And there's a new arm on the mound, Caleb Berger. Now it's the shortstop, Bobby Witt Jr. The pitch. In for a strike. It's 0 and 1. Kicks and fires. No, Definitely a swing and miss slider down and in. He finished that really well. Just couldn't get him to offer at it. On the ground to the left. And foul ball. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals towards first and it's just foul that was close kicks and deals that's to third throw is low and he can't pick it well I definitely think the speed down the line played a factor on that throw he had more time than he thought but as a fielder, the speed of the game and the speed of the runner sometimes can get in your head, and he just rushed it and failed to make a clean throw. Garrett Hampson, the next up for the Marlins. Corner infielders up on the grass expecting a bunt. Drops a bunt down the first base side, and they tag him out. Jorge Soler, the next up for the Marlins. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit is probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. This one in the dirt. No advance. Good job behind the dish. That one off the mark. Now 2 0. Appears they're working around him with the base open, Singy. Well, you know, these 2 0 counts, Boo, they're just not what they used to be. And we sound like old guys when I say that. But ultimately, this is a strategic game, and you expect to see this type of approach by the pitcher in this situation. And here it comes. Squirts away a little bit, and the runner holds. Runner leads away at second. Line drive. Could be extra bases. Here comes Witt around third. He will score. And it's 6-5. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like he did right there. Gene Segura, the next up for the Marlins. And Boog, I'd say he's due. In there for strike one.
and a pitch. Swing and a liner foul off to the right. This one popped up. Foul ground first base side. Leaps at the wall and he's got it. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. First offering, and it just misses. Two outs, and one in scoring position. The next pitch misses, and that's ball two. Ground ball, Naylor. Tosses to the pitcher covering the bag. They limit the damage here, but a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. It's now 6-5. You're watching the World Series on the show. Back here in extras, and a new pitcher on the mound in the bottom half of the inning, Johnny Cueto. And I can't imagine any save is an easy one. You're holding a small lead on the scoreboard, and you know those hitters are going to give you the best at bats they can. So it's always high stress. Let's see what he's got here to try and close it out. And now the center fielder, Brandon Marsh. Corner infielders guarding the lines, trying to prevent extra bases. In the air, out towards right center. It gets down a base hit. The throw to second. The tag, and they cut him down, going for two. And next is the Guardians catcher, Tyler Stevenson. On the ground. Segura throw to first. And they're down to their last out. That's why you hug the lines on the corners late in the ball game like this, positioned perfectly. So the lineup flips over. Here's the Cleveland leadoff hitter, Stephen Kwan. Good contact guy, good defender. Ground ball right side. And that's it. They are World Series champions. Congratulations to the World Series champions. Incredibly special team. So proud of these guys. I know the fans back in their hometown. Everybody going nuts right now. It's going to be such an amazing reception when these guys return home. Welcome back on the show as we see some of the final moments and reactions in this World Series clinching game. And now let's go down on the field where they're set to present the commissioner's trophy to the World Series champs. Chris Singleton and our outstanding crew, I'm John Chambi. This has been the World Series on MLB The Show.